Greetings fellow test subjects. Test subject 1 through 37 here for Aperture Gaming. They make it, we test it, you play it. And for today's episode, we review The Order, 1886. Now, before we get to the review, a little public service announcement. Now, uh, all my reviews I make sure are appropriate for all ages, so, uh, but the game I am reviewing is not. It is a rated M for mature video game, so, uh, please, parents, make sure, if you're buying this for yourself, well, you'll be able to, but, uh, make sure, if you're getting it for a kid, it's 18, they're 18 years or older, as there is mature subject matter in this game, limited to, including, limited to, including but not limited to, yeah, there we go, um, there is a little bit of language, there is a lot of blood, there is violence, especially, yeah, there's violence, because it is a shooting game, and um, if uh, you uh, mess up on some quick time events, you are met with an untimely demise, and of course, and of course, there be nudity in this game. Yeah, so be warned when uh, getting this game for other people, or for yourself. Uh, now, incidentally, for the nudity factor, I, I, I'm having trouble figuring this out. Let's see. Okay, now, there are games like, uh, alright, so here's like a Thief, and then there was a Dishonored, and then there was The Order. I've noticed that uh, with the uh, games that seem to be set in, uh, set in the United Kingdom, or a place that is very similar to that, by the second, no, by the second or third level, you seem to be, uh, your character seems to have to infiltrate or explore or a house of uh, ill repute. Seriously. The Golden Cat Bathhouse in Dishonored, um, in Thief, another, there's like a hidden underground uh, brothel or... And third chapter of uh, the game for just, for the 1886. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna just go out on a limb here and guess that if this trend, if it continues, I think we might see it for like the for like the third memory sequence or the third part of the first memory sequence in Assassin's Creed uh, Victoria if it does take place in London, England. So just to give you guys a fair warning on that. I just noticed that analysis, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Okay, I got that, that out of the way, so let's get on to the actual game itself. The Order 1886, well, it provides you with a good idea where the game, what year the game is based in. Uh, it takes place in an alternate universe of uh, the of London, England. All right, so the game's backstory is that uh, you are Sir Galahad, a member of the Knights of the Round Table, whose job is to protect the world from the forces of evil. And uh, these forces include, let's see, werewolves and vampires, and a rebellious resistance group that is uh, trying to stop the. Indian Trading Company, and let's see, there's also mention of Jack the Ripper, so the game, while giving some historical context, uh, only gives that like maybe two or three times, and the rest of it is uh, complete uh, craziness. Like uh, they have, air, here's what, so they have uh, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, uh, one character is mentioned, and the other character you interact with, because you get, uh, of course, the traditional Tesla lightning gun. Yeah, you also get uh, regular firearms, you also get uh, this uh, really awesome gun that uh, you shoot uh, these pellets and it makes a cloud where you fire a flare into it, and thus instant uh, flame, flame cloud. <gasps> or you fire the flare first and then you fire the t pellets so it's like a flamethrower. So yeah. Now the game, it is a shooter, but it does incorporate some other factors like you have sneaking around, and there's a quick time events. This game it also has like a lock picking and disabling of electronics. So you have Assassin's Creed and let's see, uh, I think Captain America and one of the previous Batman Arkham games. You know, for the whole electricity manipulation. So the game, it's a, uh, I guess it's following the principle of see what the popular kids are doing and imitate what they're doing factor. Yeah, so you got shooting, stealth, uh, uh, quick time events. Now, so. Visually, the game looks amazing. I got this for the PS4. I rented it. It was awesome. It, 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 it looks real. And I swear there was this one segment where the characters poured gas on 
So there was some gas that was poured, and then when the when the gas was ignited, the way the fire lit and spread across the gas, it it is amazing. Visually, the game looks great. Sound effects and music wise is also pretty good. And I liked uh, the story. It's uh, pretty good. You are Sir Galahad. You are with a team of knights. And of course, there is deceptions and lies and murder and uh, plot. Who knows? I uh, won't spoil it for you. But uh, oh man, oh man! The game. People knew what was coming. It is. I'm pretty sure that if you. Uh, you take out a lot of the action sequences and just to have it scripted because, like, all right, you walk 20 steps, cutscene. Uh, you defeat a group of bad guys and take another two steps, cutscene. You pick a lock, cutscene. The game is very cinematic. It is basically, it's a movie with, that's being interrupted by a game every now and again. That's how many cutscenes there are. It is ridiculous. And sometimes, the way that the screen is set up or what is going on in the game. It looks like a cutscene, and you won't know what's going on. You're like, what, did the game freeze? And then you're like, move the mouse, move the uh, joystick, or push a button, and then something will happen. You'll be like, oh, so it looks like a cutscene, but I can actually do some playing. Ugh. Look, I like it when a game is able to tell a story, and I do like it when they have cutscenes. And it is pretty awesome how the cutscenes and the real world do blend so seamlessly together, but come on, there is a finite line, and they are stepping over it into the... Oh, we're doing it too much. Oy. Yeah, so if you like uh, shooters, if you like... Is what? So you have... Basically, you have two weapons. A uh, pistol, and then a uh, two-handed weapon. It varies from, like, machine gun, rifle, shotgun, Tesla-based weaponry. And then you have two grenades. Regular frag grenade, and then you have your smoke grenade. It's a, it's pretty, so it's pretty good, and it gives you a little variety, and it doesn't, like, give you, okay, here's 20 weapons, so you have to figure out which uh, style works best for you. And now, it's really interesting, there's, uh, you go around and you can uh, pick up, like, these, uh, these cans, which have audio recordings, and when you interact with some stuff, you can, like, pick it up and look at it, and then you can turn it over, so I think they borrowed a little element from, uh, the, uh, L.A. Noir uh, clue examination factor, where, because seriously, you get a close-up of a hand, and then you look around at, uh, whatever it is you're holding. Like I said, they're borrowing elements from so many other games. Now, I thought the game was good, but uh, then all the cutscenes kept happening, all the cinema cinematics, it was just too much. So, I give The Order 1886 a 6.5 and a half out of 10. <sighs> yeah. So, here's what. Would, so, I wouldn't, while I wouldn't skip this game completely, I wouldn't... Uh, buy it. It's uh, more, of, I'd say this is definitely rental, like maybe one day, two at tops, if uh, you have the free time and the money. Yeah, so it's good, but uh, with so much cinema going on, I was like thinking, yeah, wow, this is a great looking movie, I can't wait to actually play the game. Mm. Yeah, so great visual effects, great sound effects, and uh, it works pretty smoothly, and there's, and I like the controls, but uh, like I said, there's just way too many cinemas. Way too many cutscenes, way too much heavy story, light on action. Alright, so that's all the time we have for this edition of uh, Aperture Gaming. So until next time, this has been Test Subject 1337 saying thank you for watching, and have a nice day.